Hey Blended Bob here, 2021 is over and now we're starting 2022 and this is my wish list of stuff I would like to see change in the, or get better in Blender for 2022, maybe for 3.1, I don't know. So it's, we're not talking about like big crazy things like uh, let's redo the compositor from scratch or whatever, no, 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 some small like, you know, paper cuts. All right, let's go. The new knife tool is awesome. If you press shift, it's gonna snap at 90 degrees angle or 45 degrees angles. But if you press shift again, it's gonna do it according to the first edge, but it will not extend to any other edge than the next one. I'm not a big fan of the basic curves because what you do is you create your basic curve and creates this curve that nobody cares about. Nobody wants this. So you need obviously to modify it. Then you modify your curve. And if you want to extend it, you need to select the point and then extrude it. And then you have to move the handles. It takes forever to create a curve. So instead I used an add-on called Bezier Utilities and it's pretty cool because it works the way you would expect it to work. You just would want to draw a curve, you draw a curve. And if you click and drag, you're going to make curves. If you just click, you're going to make a straight line. It also has tons of options, as you can see at the lower corner on the left. Uh, you have to be careful because this add-on will screw up if you export Alembic files. I don't know why, but it screws up everything. I wish Blender had a similar system built in to create curves. The color picker should be able to pick colors anywhere on your screen, not just in the Blender interface. So if I want to align all these points together, I need to select them. I need to go in the scale mode. I need to select the Y axis. I need to press zero to scale it to zero. I need to go back to the move tool. I need to press Y again, and then I need to move them. It takes seven steps to do something I do all the time. So using the Pi Menu Editor add-on, I've been able to make it much easier to work. So I get my own Pi Menu here and I just go snap Y, it snaps, and then I move it to the point where I want to align them. So what we need is uh, an option to decide if we want all the points to move together or separate so that they all snap together on the grid. So the way I did it with Pi Menu Editor is actually I'm doing the same thing as Blender does with the default settings, all the seven steps you need to do this. And to one, I just stack them one on top of the other. I press one key and it does it. And actually I need two steps to be able to do this. In Maya, I do this in one step, one click and they all align with the original point that I want to align it to. Different system. Changing the size of the manipulator is something I miss dearly in Blender and the bigger the manipulator is and the more precision you get. I don't know what happened in my preferences. Now if I press shift to get the more precision in Blender, well, it doesn't work anymore. It scales in weird axes. We need a real proxy system. I'm not talking about the old proxy system in Blender. I'm talking about a proxy system where you could have a low res object on screen, but when it renders, it just loads the high res geometry. Similar to what I did in my clip that was about 106 million polygons in Blender, something like this. Link is uh, up there somewhere. Check it out. But we need something like this in Blender. If you have multiple views, you should be able to shade them per window, not all of them together. Especially if you have a very heavy scene, it needs to re-render everything in all windows. It takes forever. And maybe in the perspective, I want to see it rendered, but in the other views, I want to be in wireframe. I spoke about this one before. In Blender, the shaders are in their little bubbles. They don't talk to each other. So if I have this noise here and I create another shader and I want to reuse the same noise, well, it's a bit complicated. I first need to copy it and then I go into the other shader where I will paste it and paste. Now that doesn't create an instance. It just makes another noise node. So if I modify this one and I go back to the original shader, well, I get different noises. If I want both to have the same, then I will have to copy this as a new driver, go to the other shader and then paste as a driver. So paste driver. So now they will both have the same thing, but I cannot modify this one. If I want to change it, I need to go back to the original shader and I need to modify it. So if I want to use that noise on hundreds of shaders, well, good luck. In this other software, well, all the shaders are part of the same world. So you can use the same fractal or whatever noise, whatever you want, and connect it to as many shaders as you want. So I, I change one, it's going to change on all of them. It also makes it much easier to see the parameters from one shader to another. So if I put the diffuse on this one, I don't know, at 0.5, I can select another shader. I didn't change object. I didn't select something else. I just selected another shader because all the shaders are in the same world. It's so much more efficient. I want the ability to overwrite anything on a per object per layer. So here on this layer, I got a blue sphere and a red cube. If I create a new layer, I cannot change the shaders. I cannot see on this layer, I want this shader and on this layer, I want another shader. 
and it's not just for the shader itself but also for the parameters of the shaders I would like to have another layer let's say I will copy this one here and I would like on this one to change I don't know what can I change the, uh, the metallic let's change the metallic here well too much okay so I change the metallic on this one I would like it only on this layer well I cannot do this so this is an example in the other software here I got my shaders here on another layer well I just switch the shaders and on the third layer well I change the eccentricity on the shader here the way it works is you just right click on what you want to change and you go create layer override and that's it and you can override any parameters not just for the shaders you could say for example the intensity of the light or the color of the light if they cast shadow or not pretty much everything can be overwritten the FBX add-on needs a little bit of love because uh, it's a little bit buggy. I know it's difficult because uh, Autodesk doesn't reveal how it's done and you have to reverse engineering it. There's an add-on called Blender uh, Better FBX, and, uh, but you have to pay for it. But it's really good. It's not perfect, but it's better than the, the default one. But still, I think that the, the Blender one should be you know, optimized or fixed or you know, better. It would be awesome if the bisect tool could use shift to snap at 45 degrees angles just like the knife tool does because right now I cannot cut exactly horizontally. The only way to do it is to try to do your best and then you have to go in the settings there and change them, make sure everything is 0, 0 and 1. The hotkey editor is a big mess because there's no way to know if there's a conflict between two things if you already use that hotkey and there are so many hotkeys in Blender it becomes confusing very fast. Now look at this one, you have a nice keyboard and it shows you which keys are already taken. So the U and the I are not taken in this case. And I can try all the key combinations like Command, Alternate, Control, F Shift, any combination you can imagine, you can see what's available. You can even create your own functions with Python scripts. I got a bunch of happy little cubes here. Some are instances and some are objects. And the only way to know it is to select them and try to edit them in edit mode. There's nothing in the outliner that tells me which one is an instance. Here I have an array of spheres. I use the same random shader that I use for the cubes, but they all treat it as one object. It would be nice to be able to shade them on a per sphere or on per object or per instance. Like I tried with the data, I tried with the object, just doesn't work. It would be nice to be able to do this. The only way I found was to apply all the modifiers, go in edit mode and separate them by loose part. But then I lose the ability to use them as an array. And now I get a tons of object instead of having just one. And speaking of random colors, it seems like the random is not that random. I mean, this I should have access to the entire range of all the colors there, but it looks like I'm only using like five or ten, and like I get many spheres of the exact same color next to each other. Hmm. VDB vector blur. We need to be able to render smoke with motion blur. Right now we cannot, or uh, probably water particles also will not render with uh, motion blur. Uh, so, well, it, it was like this a while ago. I don't know if it's, it has been fixed, but anyway, it's on my list. So, a uh, vector blur for VDBs. I got three objects in the scene and they are all references, which is the same thing as linked in Blender. But you have a reference editor and you can easily turn them on and off. So, click, 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 they're gone or they come back. And there are many other functions you can do with this editor. You can replace the link for something else. You can make a proxy. You can do tons of stuff. This is a good example. I need to model this building and I had the blueprints in PDF. I imported them into Illustrator, exported them into SVG, imported them into Blender, but it's so heavy. I wish I could just load the layers as needed as I build the different floors. In the other software, as I open the file, I can decide in the options if I want to load all the references or even choose which references that I want to load. So this way I don't need to load the entire file in one shot. I can just decide exactly what I need. And of course, as I've shown before, I can always go back to the reference editor and dynamically load or unload anything I want. I badly need this. This is something that was driving me crazy a few months ago. You can create a driver on the offset if you want to, but you cannot do it on the start frame and I really badly needed it. We should be able to create drivers on anything. UV editor, I talked about it before. We could talk about it for hours, for days, for weeks, for months. Uh, well, let's, uh, let's just deal with these few issues. 
This is something I talked about before in the UV editor. I want to be able to see a line that defines the islands in both the viewport and the UV editor. So this way I can see where there's a cut. So if I select this UV and I move it, you see they're not connected. Also, I would love to have the ability to see the UV islands in different colors. There are actually tons of stuff that could be made in the UV editor, but we'll keep it like this for now. It would be great if Blender could come with some textures for the brushes. Now it's kind of empty. When you do a displacement map, it will always push the points according to the normal of the object, just like that. But when you use a vector displacement map, it can actually curve the geometry. Let me show you. You see now, you can see there's a curve here. It's not going in a straight line according to the normals. You have a cavity here and you can see inside the ear here. It's very cool. Blender supports it and we're very happy about it, but we cannot bake it when we sculpt it. So we need to be able to bake vector displacement maps. Unless I'm mistaken, I don't think in Blender you can sculpt with a constraint to an axis, like only in the Z axis. It's very useful actually. I want it, please, please, please. The mist settings should not be done in the world. It should be done on a per camera basis because every camera should have its own control over the mist. Houdini has this cool feature when you can turn models into bounding box when they are far away. So this way you don't need to display all this geometry if you work on something you know, more close up. It's a really cool feature. I'd love to have this in Blender. This is a sunlight. Is it pointing towards me or away from me? It's hard to tell. Even if I move it, it's not obvious. I find it much more easier with this design instead. I use snaps all the time, but going into the little pop-up menu to turn it on and off, it's very annoying for me. So using Pi Menu Editor, I've been able to create a hotkey that will do it as I press the key. And if I release the key, it turns it off. So I just click, it's on, and I release, it's off. So I got one key for snap to grid, one key for snap to edges, one key to snap to vertices, and one key for snap to faces. So yeah, Blender, we need hotkeys that are on on press and off on release. Another thing I miss in Blender is the ability to view from a spotlight. So either a spotlight or directional light, so I can see it as if it was a camera and I can place my light very, very fast. The fire and smoke shader needs some love in Blender because we can take the same VDB from Houdini and from Blender, the same VDB and render them and compare them. I just cannot get the same result in Blender as I get in Houdini with all the little, you know, the finesse in it. It's just not there. Maybe it's me, maybe I'm just not good at it. Uh, I will put the VDB in, the, uh, in my Dropbox, link is in the description. Check it out if you want to give it a shot. But it's really, really hard to get that, that little finesse with the VDBs in Blender. I've tried different settings. I tried to put some uh, multipliers on them and try to do a lot of things and just I cannot get the same result or not even close. I've tried with another VDB. I got closer with this one, but still it's not the same. So I thought I could try the same VDB in Clarisse, which is another renderer. And if I look at the properties here, if I do a search here, I can see there's density, there's flames, and there's two temperatures of flame. I don't have this in Blender. I cannot get, get this parameter. Could that be it? Maybe I need this flame parameter in Blender. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a specialist in explosions and VDBs and stuff. So that's why the link is in the description. Give it a shot. If you can do better, please tell me how you did it. I would appreciate it. Thank you so much. So I just imported a bouncing sphere in my scene. It's an alembic and there's no easy way to just bounce it or loop it or whatever. The only way to do it is manually by overriding the frame. So I will go in frame one, say this is my frame one, insert a keyframe, go to frame 20, set my uh, frame to 20, insert a keyframe. Then I need to go in the graph editor. I need to uncheck this so I can see my curve. All right, I need to do it linear. So interpolation linear. And if I want to bounce it or repeat it or whatever, I need to go here and add a modifier. And uh, I want to do a cycle. And from there, I can decide if I want to repeat the action. You see it's bouncing now, or I can cycle it or whatever I want. Well, maybe just a little pop up in the constraint for the Alembic for loop and bounce would have been, you know, a nice addition. If I instance them in geometry node, I have no control about the offset of the spheres. I cannot make them all bounce at different rhythms. So this is what happens if I do it. You see, bong, 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 all together. I know a software, and it's not Maya, where you can instance 
thousands of objects if you want, all the same object, and you can offset the animation with a slider. Just offset animation and you decide how many frames you want to offset. So if you have all these running guys, they will not run in sync, they will all run differently. And this is really, really cool. I did an entire blender bob about grouping, I'm not gonna go back to this, watch the clip if you want more information, but at least please highlight everything that's under the hierarchy of a selected object. In the compositor, everything will have filmic applied to it if the color management is set to filmic, even if it's a plate and it shouldn't be in filmic. So I could say, well, all right, I'm gonna put it in standard instead, and on my render, I will put the render in filmic, right? But no, there is no filmic option, only filmic log. But anyway, I think it's time to say goodbye to filmic, it's time to move to Asus. You know, the same thing they use at these little unknown companies. Oh, and this one too. If you want to disconnect something and plug it somewhere else, you need to click on the dot and plug it where you want it, exactly on it. Well, didn't work. Why? Okay, let's undo. Let's try again. Okay, so I click on the dot. I move it there. You need to be very precise. And now it works. Cool. But it doesn't work the other way around because if you click on the dot, well, you're going to create a new noodle. And that's kind of annoying when you work on very, very long distances, when the nodes are very far away, because you need to unplug the where it arrives back to where you want it to go. So, mm. in this software, you can connect from any direction you want. So I can disconnect here, or I can connect from the base to this if I want to. And you see the little highlights that tells me I'm about to disconnect it. So any direction, it just works. Same thing here, you can disconnect from the top, from the bottom, you can connect from the top, connect from the bottom, it doesn't matter, it always works. Same thing with this one, you can connect in any direction and you can disconnect in any direction. Well, I guess you get my point. So you create primitives in the geo nodes, but there are no UVs on them. I needed them in my last project, so I had to export everything as an alembic. Another thing that gave me a hard time, there are no origins, so you can have a transform node, but you cannot place an origin in the scene for geometry nodes. Okay, this is a big one. I said it before and I will say it again and again and again and again until it's fixed. We need to be able to work Y up, okay? So in the game industry, Unity, Unreal, 3D Max, which is mostly used in the game industry, they work Z up, good for them, have fun. But in the VFX, we work Y up, Modo, Maya, Nuke, Houdini, you name them, they all work Y up. And that gives us tons and tons and tons of problems. I spoke about it before. It really needs to be addressed. I know it's a big one. I know it requires a lot of recording, but it really is a major, major, major issue. Please do it. Okay, the last one, I think Blender should be free. I mean, why do we have to pay thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars per year for the licensing and everything? It's so expensive. Blender should be free for the entire planet, for everybody, for everyone, anytime, for the rest of the universe. I'm waiting to read the comments. That's going to be funny. I've been working on that list for a very, very long time now. And I was writing notes from time to time. Oh, this, I don't like this. Oh, this should be fixed. Oh, blah, 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 blah. And when I started to do this video, I was going through the list and I was like, hey, this is relevant now. This is fixed. This is fixed. This is fixed. This is fixed. It's so cool to see that Blender evolves so fast. And I I'm so happy about this. So I hope this will inspire some, uh, some developers and they will think, uh, yeah, maybe that's a good idea. Or maybe we could try to do something similar or even better. So, uh, yeah, happy 2022. Bye.